Today is April the 29th. Why did the same people who shouted Hosanna on Sunday at the triumphal entry shout crucify him on Good Friday before Pilate? Let's find out together as we study the beginning of Passion Week in the Gospels. Today, as we read through the Bible in a year, I'd like you to read Matthew chapter 21, just the first nine verses. Mark chapter 11, just the first 10 verses. Luke 19, from 28 to, 20, to 44. And John 12, 12 to verse 50. Here in this passage, uh, We've, we find one of the few uh, episodes of the life of Jesus that are repeated in all four of the Gospels. That's the triumphal entry. John leads into the triumphal entry. He tells us of a time when Jesus was anointed in Bethany before the triumphal entry, anointed by Mary of Mary and Martha fame in uh, John chapter 12. And at the end of John chapter 12, we're told that Lazarus also had a plot against him. At the end of the story of Mary anointing uh, Jesus' feet, um, we're told in verse 9, when all the people heard of Jesus' arrival, they flocked to see him and also to see Lazarus, the man Jesus had raised from the dead. Then the leading priest decided to kill Lazarus too, for it was because of him that many of the people had deserted them and believed in Jesus. Following that, we have in all four Gospels the story of the triumphal entry. Jesus enters into Jerusalem. Um, at his entry, he quotes Zechariah that says that your king will come to you seated on a donkey. And that indeed is the way that Jesus came into uh, the town that day. At the end of that, in the book of John, we have two other things that happen. Greeks come to talk to Jesus. Starting in verse 20, some Greeks who had come to Jerusalem for the Passover celebration paid a visit to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee. They said, sir, we want to meet Jesus. Well, Philip told Andrew, Andrew and Philip went to Jesus. And it's interesting, Jesus' reaction to that is to ignore the invitation to go and speak to the Greeks. He doesn't do it. Instead, he enters into a discussion about being tempted to step away from what God has called him to do. God has called him to go to the cross. You know, I think what's going on um, is that the Greeks were inviting Jesus to leave Jerusalem, to return with them wherever they were from, possibly from Alexandria in Egypt, possibly from Babylon to the north. All of those would have been called Greeks. They were actually Jews, but they were Hellenized Jews. They were much more open than the traditional Jews in Jerusalem were. You know, in the book of John, we don't have Jesus' prayer in Gethsemane. He goes to Gethsemane, but he goes to be arrested. It doesn't mention Jesus praying to God, let this cup pass from me. The temptation in John is here when the Greeks come to him. Jesus says in verse 27, now my soul is deeply troubled. Should I pray, Father, save me from this hour? No. 
This is the very reason I came. Father, bring glory to your name. Jesus says, I'm tempted, but I'll not go. I'll stay here, stay the course, and go to the cross. The second thing that happens in verse 37, the author John just makes a comment. Despite all the miraculous signs that Jesus had done, most of the people still did not believe in him. This is exactly what Isaiah the prophet had predicted. And he goes on to quote that passage from Isaiah 6, that they'll see with their eyes but not perceive. They will hear with their ears but not listen. They will not turn to God. They will not be healed by God. What do we see in this passage? We see Jesus foretelling that he will be rejected. He does that in Luke 19 from 41 to 44 when he weeps for Jerusalem at the end of the triumphal entry. He breaks down and begins to cry saying, Jerusalem, if only you would believe, but I know you're not going to. Then Jesus is tempted, tempted to go and speak to the Greeks, take his ministry away from Jerusalem, away from the people that want to kill him, and go talk to the Hellenized Jews. But Jesus is resolute. He decides, no, this is what I came for. I will die here. We began this whole devotional with a question. Why did the same people who shouted Hosanna during the triumphal entry shout crucify him on Good Friday? John the author tells us in verses 42 and 43 of chapter 12. Many people did believe in him, however, including some of the Jewish leaders, but they wouldn't admit to it for fear that the Pharisees would expel them from the synagogues, for they loved human praise more than the praise of God. That's why on Sunday they could shout Hosanna, but on Friday, when the Pharisees were there watching, they shouted with the Pharisees, crucify him. The author of the book of John tells us they loved human praise more than they loved God. Like, follow, and subscribe to this devotional on whatever platform you use to listen to it. Email your questions to us at questions at becomehope.com. Spend this Sunday in your local church enjoying the fellowship of your Christian brothers and worshiping the Lord that we serve together.